Ace became a top commander on a Yonko crew, Luffy became an emperor himself in just over two years, and Sabo rose to the position of commander-in-chief of the Revolutionary Army with the sole purpose of taking down the world nobles. But what if instead of seeking freedom from the world government, all three boys instead joined the marines together in order to make the world a better place that way? And of course this story simply must begin back in the Goa Kingdom where these three boys originally grew up. Now, from chapter after one on, we know that Luffy was inspired to become a great pirate when he was saved from certain death by his mentor Shanks. However, we also know that during that time, Garp had been training Luffy as well. Well, if you can call throwing him into the jungle or tying him to a balloon training, I guess, with the specific purpose of turning him into a top-notch marine. And we can pretty much assume that he did something very similar with Ace since he raised him as well. However, both of them were dead set on becoming pirates in the end. But for this scenario, let's Let's imagine for a second that something really fundamentally changed about their childhood. Maybe Garb was actually a good grandparent for a change and actually spent some time with the boys which made them then want to follow in his footsteps. Or what I personally think would be a much more likely situation could have been that the village where Luffy grew up in might have been attacked by a ruthless and cruel band of pirates. And so I think it's reasonable to assume that Shanks is out at sea so there is no one to protect the village. And we could even say that these pirates might have set fire to the forest on Mount Corvo which would affect Ace also since he was living up there with the mountain bandits. And so with the pirates running free, there is no hope for the village until this marine admiral pulls up on his chilly bicycle and casually wipes out all the pirates. Which would of course be a major turning point here because it would show Luffy and Ace just how important the marines could be to this world. And so this single moment ultimately inspires them to become marines in the future as well. And I also think that the boys could have also pretty easily convinced Sabo to join the marines with them since Sabo already has a very good heart and wants to free people as well, which he can easily do as a marine. And so of course, since he doesn't want to become a pirate here, we're gonna assume that he doesn't set out to sea on his own and he doesn't get himself blown up. Now interestingly enough, we actually don't know for sure what age exactly people can join the marines in One Piece, but we do know that this pink haired boy was 16 when he first joined, so let's assume that older teenagers can actually join the marines. And so just to keep things easy, let's say that Ace and Sabo would join when they're 17, which is the same age that Ace originally set out to become a pirate as well. And of course, if these two are joining the Marines, there is no way that Luffy's staying behind, so Garp is forced to let the 14-year-old Luffy join as well. And as these three together begin to climb through the Marine ranks, there are a few important things to keep in mind here. First, Luffy would very likely still have the straw hat, but a major question we will have to answer later on is just how long Shanks will actually let him keep that hat if he actually remains a marine. Secondly, you might have very serious doubts about Luffy ever actually following someone else's orders, but this is where I should mention that their personalities would probably be slightly changed as well. Luffy at this point would still be adventurous, but if he knows that he wants to be a marine, he would probably eventually get used to the idea of taking orders from someone else. Also, Ace will still be hot-headed, and Sabo would of course still want to free people from oppression, just like they do in the original story. Plus, even though they are supposed to follow orders, do you really think that this is going to happen all the time? <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. Also, keep in mind that the timeline is also not the same as in the normal story, since Luffy didn't start his pirate journey for another three years into the future. And so of course, let's kick off this marine adventure of the three where every recruit begins life as chore boys. Because very much unlike when Garp personally started training Kobe, I think that Garp would be very much sick and tired of these three troublemakers at this point, so they would just be assigned to these random navy bases and start at the very bottom of the marine ranks. However, you know as well as me that this probably wouldn't last very long because these rambunctious kids are probably so awful at doing normal chores that Garb would probably just throw them into battle since they aren't good for anything else at this point. And so it's off to the ships to fight pirates in the East Blue. And I do think that they would stay this way for at least a couple of years working their way up the ranks from chore boy to seamen recruits because of their impressive fighting capabilities. Also, one other major change here would be that Ace of course most likely wouldn't get his fire devil fruit since he only found it after setting out to sea to become a pirate. This means that Luffy is the only one of the three with an actual devil fruit. Not that it matters though because they are all insanely strong and capable of taking out random pirates though I do wonder if Ace would eventually choose to use a sword or another bladed weapon if he didn't get his original fruit. 
fruits. However, this simple life in the East Blue can continue forever though, so let's say that two years have passed. Ace and Sabo are now 19, and they have been promoted to petty officers, while Luffy at age 16 remains a seaman first class. And now, you might be wondering, Manu, Kobe moved from being a recruit to being a captain in that exact same amount of time, so shouldn't these three monsters move up way faster than him? Which I'd say is a fair point, but also do remember that Kobe had personal training from Garb, so that with the help of Garb's recommendations, he probably moved up the ranks a lot faster than normal. Plus, on top of that, Oda probably had to somewhat keep pace with Pirate Luffy's warp speed advancement as well, which isn't the case in this scenario. However, no worries, because that is all going to change very quickly, because we have to remember that in any military organization, you can stay with your friends forever. And so it's at this point after two years that the three childhood friends are split up for the first time. Sabo is being sent to work with the awful Captain Morgan at Shellstown, which is not going to turn out very well, as we'll see in just a moment. Ace is assigned to Lieutenant Commander Full Body, and Luffy is going to be assigned to Commodore Pudding Pudding. But even though the boys are separated now, I can just imagine that they would still all want to compete with each other to see who can get promoted the quickest. Especially Luffy, since he is already behind the other two. And now keep in mind that even though Sabo is a Marine, he would still have a strong sense of doing what is right. So when he's put under the command of the abusive and, if we're being honest, straight up evil Captain Morgan, I don't think that Sabo would put up with it for very long. And while I'm not very sure if this Marine version of Sabo would challenge Morgan to a direct fight because of Marine regulations, I do think that he would definitely collect evidence and submit a report to the Marine higher ups. And then I could absolutely imagine Morgan finding out about it and then trying to just straight out kill Sabo on his own, which would of course be the perfect chance for Sabo to then crush Morgan and get him kicked out of the Marines. And let's shift over to Ace now because if he's working with full body, then they will probably be dining at the floating restaurant Baratier quite frequently, which is absolutely perfect for Ace who can eat his fill during his visits here. And I think he would also have a chance to run into some pretty strong pirates who are coming for a tasty grub as well. And even though it's still about a year before Don Creek shows up in the normal timeline, Ace can still get a reputation as a defender of the floating restaurant, which would probably make him pretty good friends with Sanji. However, while the older two are making names for themselves, it is Luffy who truly makes the first major splash as a Marine. Because let's say another year has passed and now we're basically caught up to the main timeline at the start of the actual series. Now, Luffy is still working for Pudding Pudding, which eventually brings him to Arlong Park, just like what happened in chapter 75. However, while Arlong easily killed all the Marines back then, this time they do have Luffy with them. And while it might be tough for Luffy alone to fight all of the Arlong pirates by himself, we have to remember that he has already been out at sea for three years now and should be quite a bit stronger than he was when he actually started the story in the normal storyline. And so, in his heroic moment, Luffy wipes out the entire Arlong pirates and saves Nami's village on his own, which means that he would likely befriend the orange-haired navigator, who would then very possibly join the marines as well since her village is safe and her adopted mother Belmere was also a marine, in case you forgot. And so while we're still missing out on most of the other straw hats, at least Nami is joining Luffy in the marine ranks. And now, these heroics got Luffy promoted up to the rank of Ensign that you can see on the list here. And he's not the only one because Ace and Sabo have also scored their very own impressive victories now. For example, Sabo and his new commander Ripper here have gone and rescued Orange Town from the invading buggy pirates. And Ace also takes out Don Creek when the starving pirate tries to take over the Baratier. Unfortunately though, no one is around to save Usopp's village, so sorry Usopp fans once again, it looks like this tradition of dying in these what-ifs just continues. Which does mean that Ace and Sabo are now joining Luffy in the lowest rank of officer in the Marines. Oh boy, let's just uh, hope they don't actually get to give orders to anyone, but with this promotion come new assignments. Ace and Luffy are both placed under Captain Smoka in Loketown, while Sabo is assigned to Captain Hina, who is already on the Grand Line. And even though Smoka was actually originally happy to stay at Loketown in the original story, I think that with his new two recruits constantly annoying him to go to the Grand Line, he would probably sooner or later agree, just so these two would shut up about it. And so now that we finally made it to the Grand Line, Ace, Sabo, and Luffy are going to move through the ranks 
very, very quickly. Though, as we'll see very soon, it's not always in a uh, positive direction. Because while they patrol the seas under their new captains, I like to imagine that Luffy still runs into Vivi at some point. Maybe they also come to Whiskey Peak and meet her there. But whatever way it happens, Vivi would very likely still tell them all about her country's troubles after seeing how strong Luffy and Ace truly are. And of course, Luffy and Ace would want to go right away to take down the Sandman, but Smoker says they cannot interfere with a warlord because they're basically immune from the marines. However, the captain at least does agree to go to Alabasta just to be around in case anything goes wrong. Sabo and Hinang also arrive there and as the civil war kicks into high gear, the three boys simply cannot sit around and let all of these innocent people die. And so in their very first major act of insubordinance, Ace, Sabo and Luffy work together to take down Sir Crocodile, which they somehow manage to do even though he is a Logia fruit user. And Luffy might actually also run into Robin, and although she wouldn't let him become her friend, Luffy would probably still let her go. He could even mention that if she's looking for a crew to help her, then maybe she should try to find Shanks, but we'll see exactly how Robin's story goes later on in this video, actually. For now, though, this whole situation, of course, causes a major headache for the world government, and these three marines are headed for a ton of trouble, because even though the rulers of Alabama Basta officially thanked the three boys, they are still demoted back to warrant officers. Oh, uh, whoopsie. However, at this point, the marine higher-ups see very great potential in all three of them, so I do think it makes sense now they were each assigned to an admiral for special training. Yes, you heard that right, which is going to supercharge their advancements, just like we saw when Garp started training Kobe. And they would likely pair up the two most hot-headed, so Ace would go with Akainu. Mm -hmm. Luffy gets paired with Kizaru, by the way, I would absolutely love to see how this training would go, since they're both pretty much airheads. Which leaves Sabo going with Aokiji, which is actually also very interesting, because Aokiji, just like Sabo, is starting to have some very serious questions about the corruption in the world government system. And so, this means that they would definitely learn basic hockey. I also think that Luffy would develop some of his gear techniques, which all result in a huge power boost for all three, especially because they now have the fundamental tools to fight with any Devil Fruit user in the Grand Line. And so, while these boys are getting their own personal training arc, let's shift to other events going on in the world for a second, because even with Ace, Sabo, and Luffy all in the Marines, I still think that Blackbeard would very much be able to backstab this guy and steal his Darkness Logia Fruit. And then from here on out, you would still have the exact same plan to become a Warlord. However, this time, instead of being able to capture Luffy, as was his original plan, or take out Ace when he came for revenge, Blackbeard will have to find some other way to convince the world government to actually make him a warlord. And so, to keep things fairly similar to the original events, let's assume that he still targets members of the Whitebeard Pirates. Maybe he takes out some of the lower ranking commanders, and this increased level of aggression could see someone like Marco the Phoenix come after Blackbeard. And then if Blackbeard could capture him and hand him over to the Marines, then we have all the ingredients that we need for another Marine Fort. Although, as we know, Blackbeard would have a way harder time sneaking into to Impel Down to break out the level 6 prisoners, since Luffy isn't there to cause a massive prison break. Though, the Darkness Fruit user might also be able to come up with some other plans, such as the Hypnosis user Lafitte somehow sneaking in and causing their own prison break. Whatever way it would go, with Marco taking Ace's place on the execution stand, Whitebeard would still very likely come to try and rescue his right-hand man, which perfectly sets the stage for Ace, Sabo, and Luffy to demonstrate their new powers in a war that unfolds much differently than the original story. Because now we have to keep in mind that Marco was a key fighter for the Whitebeard Pirates during the war. He even took on Admiral, so with him on the execution stand, that is a major loss for the Pirates. Plus, none of the Impel Down prisoners that actually help Whitebeard. And while I don't think that A, Sabo, and Luffy are ready to take on Whitebeard yet, I do think that they would do very well against the Whitebeard commanders, such as Jozu, Vista, and Izo. Perfect power level for that. Which actually all results in the marines winning this fight a lot easier than in the original story. Marco actually gets executed, sorry, which honestly pains me to say since he's one of my all-time favorite characters. Whitebeard's defeat doesn't change, which
which once again allows Blackbeard to swoop in and steal his Devil Fruit. And although it's possible that this time the Marines may be able to keep Blackbeard away, I believe that this was Blackbeard's ultimate goal all along, so I do think that he would somehow figure a way to get this done. Which of course means that this is where things turn dark. Because with Whitebeard dead, I think that Akainu and other marines would continue to fight against the remaining pirates, causing way more bloodshed than in the original war. And of course, this is particularly hard to take for someone like Sabo or Luffy, who would probably hate to see lives needlessly wasted. Which does mean that everyone would be very relieved when Shanks finally shows up to stop the war. However, this might not actually be as good for Luffy as you might think. Because remember that Shanks trusted Luffy with his legendary straw hat because he assumed that Luffy would become a great pirate and he likely even knew that Luffy had the potential to become Joy Boy. So now that Luffy is clearly established as a marine, we have to ask ourselves, what would Shanks do at this point? Well, I do think that the most likely thing after he stops the fighting is that he gives Luffy a very severe warning. He would say something along the lines of, that hat belongs in the hands of the future Pirate King and he might even demand demand that Luffy leave the marines or give up the hat. Which of course brings up a very interesting dilemma for Luffy now. He was inspired by Shanks as a kid but eventually decided to become a marine after seeing evil pirates attacking his village. So while I'm sure that he still feels some call to adventure here, in this scenario he will reject Shanks' warning and stay a marine, which leaves Shanks with two options. One, try to eventually convince Luffy to become a pirate, or two, to kill him so that his devil fruit can and be reincarnated. However, at the same time, I of course just can't see Shanks taking out Luffy right here, especially after he just stopped the fighting. So for now, he zips in, steals the straw hat back, and then leaves. Which would still leave Luffy furious, but he would probably be held back by Sabo and Ace. And now, with Marineford over, Whitebeard is dead and his crew is shattered. Blackbeard is basically a Yonko at this point, and Ace, Sabo, and Luffy are all promoted to captain based on their feats during the war. And this promotion actually grants them a little bit more freedom and their own ships and crews. And the first thing that they do with this freedom is subscribe to this channel, which you can do very much as well by pressing that shiny red subscribe button under this video. However, there are even more changes coming to this world. Because even though there wouldn't be a two-year time skip, Akainu and Aokiji would still have their legendary duel. Aokiji would, of course, still lose and leave the marines, which of course would be a major blow to all three of the boys since Aokiji is you might remember, saved Ace and Luffy back at the beginning of this storyline, and the Icy Admiral was of course the one who personally trained Sabo. So, uh, hmm, I wonder if we'll, we'll see him again later. Now that of course means that we have some new Admirals to pick as well, and while Luffy immediately volunteers, he is passed over. But don't worry, just wait until you see the truly epic battle that actually earns him that promotion later on. And now, this does take the boys into the new world, where they really start to shine. Over the next two years, years, they battled countless strong pirates, growing stronger and developing their hockey. Luffy and Ace might also finally unlock their Conqueror's hockey at some point, though it has never been confirmed if Sabo has this ability as well. And they might actually have also become friends with Zoro, who in this timeline has become a very strong bounty hunter. Actually, funny we haven't seen any of those ones before. And between Zoro and the three young captains, they make something of a competition out of taking down members of the worst generation like Kit, who's particularly ruthless, the strong man Basil Hawkins, and even perhaps Jewelry Bonnie, who the Marines were extra focused on recapturing. And over time, all of these feats eventually see them rise to the rank of Vice Admiral. Not that bad for a bunch of teenagers, but just wait until you see what comes next. For now, I think Luffy might actually also meet Rayleigh at some point, and just like Shanks, I think that the former right hand of the Pirate King would try to convince Luffy to become a pirate once more. Which, at this point, might actually be starting to look Look a lot more attractive to Luffy, especially as he sees more of the corruption of the world government. For example, he might want to take a more active role in taking down the Yonko, but the marine leadership just won't let him. However, Luffy says orders be damned because when he, Ace, and Sabo join Fujitora in Dressrosa, and 
and they see all of the horrific things that Doflamingo has done, I can't see anyone stopping all three of them from taking down the corrupt warlords. And while once again this does save the kingdom, their actions draw the wrath of the fleet admiral Akainu, just like Fujitora did in the original story, which gets them banned from all marine bases for the moment. However, of course this doesn't bother them, and I think around this time they would also reunite with the former admiral Kuzan, who tells them a little bit about why he left and what he's planning to do in the future. At this point, Luffy and Sabo are tempted to actually join him, especially Sabo, but Ace convinces both of them to stay and remain loyal to the marines, because Ace in particular doesn't want to leave the relationship that he has developed with many of his comrades in the marines. However, the more time Luffy now spends in the new world, the more tempting it actually becomes for him to learn about the One Piece. Which means that when Kuzan leaves them with one other very important piece of information, they immediately set off to their most important mission yet. Because apparently Kuzan has met with Nico Robin and she has been secretly going around collecting information on the so-called Poneglyphs. Kuzan tells them where she is and that she would like to see Luffy again because she has some information that she wants to give him. So Ace, Sabo and Luffy go meet up with Robin and this single event is going to have major consequences for the three boys but especially for the entire world. Because when the boys finally meet her on some random island, they are met with a shocking surprise. Blackbeard and his crew have also arrived and are ransacking the entire island trying to find Robin. And this instantly puts Luffy, Sabo and Ace into battle mode and they square off against the actual Blackbeard pirates. But with just the three of them against a Yonko crew, they would probably have a very hard time coming out on top. However, this is just the start of this clash because Kuzan, who at this point has rejected Blackbeard's invitation, shows up as well to help the three marines. And he is not alone, because even though he left the marines, he still wanted to bring peace to the world, which led him to warn the marines that something might happen on this island. So not only does Kuzan arrive, but also the three admirals, Kizaru, Green Bull, and Fujitora, they all show up to stomp out the Yonko threat. Which, let's be real, even though it's Blackbeard, would definitely turn the battle into the Marines' favor. That is, of course, until another major player joins the conflict as well. You see, ever since Luffy, Ace, and Sabo took out Doflamingo, the Yonko Kaido has been out for their blood as well, because they ruined his artificial devil fruit production. And let's say he somehow follows them to this island and joins this insane battle. Which honestly, for that island at this point, rest in peace, it's probably going to be destroyed. But at the end of this battle, it does bring some hope for the future. Because I do think that the three admirals together would be able to combine take out Kaido, but not without suffering casualties. Plus, Blackbeard is known for backstabbing, so I think it's fair to say that even though Kaido gets taken out, all three admirals are killed. But of course, this would leave our three young heroes, who at this point would surely have awakened some of their advanced hockey. Although, I'm not sure if Luffy would ever unlock gear 5 as a marine, but at this point I think they are admiral level fighters on their own, so their combined strength plus the help of Kuzan should be enough to eventually defeat Blackbeard and end the entire battle. Which absolutely would throw the world into chaos. I mean, two emperors defeated, three admirals killed, the entire world would be in shock. However, I do think that the marines would wisely promote Ace, Sabo, and Luffy to admiral right away, since they're now basically the strongest marines on that level. And even though these three might be tired of the corruption of the world government, at least as admirals they might be able to have some real influence on the marines. And most excitingly, this probably also means that Ace and Sabo get to pick from the world government's stock of devil fruits, although we don't know exactly how that process works. Regardlessly, they would probably grow even stronger with new overpowered devil fruits. But now, with the world in absolute chaos, the race to find the One Piece heats up even more. And as Luffy's out finding the flood of pirates seeking the treasure, he is met by none other than Red Hair Shanks, who has come with once again another challenge. If Luffy can defeat Shanks, then the Red Hair Captain will leave him alone for good, but if Shanks wins, then Luffy must leave the Marines and chase after the One Piece because Shanks believes it is his destiny. And so if you want to see exactly how this legendary battle between Luffy and Shanks might go, you can watch this video right here. Shanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.